I told you and I talked about it and I argued about it. And a lot of you, I think, are going to end up saying, you know what? Clay Travis was right about this. I said that Michigan State was railroading uh, Mel Tucker based on allegations of illegitimacy that were brought by Brenda Tracy in this case. And I went aggressive on it. I talked about it a great deal. Uh, I'll discuss it with you again. Brenda Tracy retroactively said that she had not consented to phone sex after Mel Tucker decided to break their relationship off. Um, And in fact, there is ample evidence that Brenda Tracy went to the uh, Title IX investigators at Michigan State not because she felt that she was being uh, unfairly treated, but because she was angry that Mel Tucker did not want to be in a relationship with her and was starting to break it off. There were, I believe, 27 phone calls between the two of them of over 30 minutes in length. Uh, This was a personal relationship. She wanted Mel Tucker to date her. She wanted him to leave uh, 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 his wife. Um, I think all the evidence supports this. Even in the phone sex call, 36-minute phone call, that engaged in phone sex and she claims that she froze and retroactively she said it was a non-consensual phone sex call which doesn't make any sense at all this is absolutely crazy well Mel Tucker's lawyers have now sent a 106 page letter with new evidence to Michigan State uh, to the interim president and the board of trustees that happened this morning Uh, the letter from his attorneys also released to the media, uh, said that Brenda Tracy, quote, appears to have made a career out of misleading and manipulating people. Uh, The letter offers all sorts of uh, contradictions from Tracy uh, and says that she also uh, has another relationship going on with... um, uh, (laughs) And some some of these details are important. But she also had another relationship going on with a married man. Uh, And the letter also has uh, allegations about about why Brenda Tracy uh, has decided to to file this complaint against Mel Tucker in the first place. Um, And according to the letter, Tracy wrote, I'm filing a formal complaint with Michigan State. My lawyer said after that, we can let him know we want to come to an agreement that it doesn't have to go to a hearing or anything unless it wants to. And again, these are messages. She also said, money is my only recourse to make him feel like there is a punishment. And when they do the money, I should make him pay me $10,000 directly. Um, And uh, she, I mean... All of this is, again, I am just going to say, this is, a, this is a railroading, this is a rig job. Brenda Tracy is not a hero here. She is a vindictive, jilted woman who decided when Mel Tucker didn't want to be in a relationship with her that by her own words, she wanted him to suffer and have to pay her. That's why she went to Michigan State and filed this complaint. This is a BS, trumped-up charge. I think a lot of people in the media who bought this whole cloth are going to be embarrassed as more and more of this evidence comes out. And again, I said it. I'm going to continue to say it. This is about the members of the media who should be covering this case mostly and I stress mostly, mostly, almost exclusively, being afraid to call out this for what it is and has been a BS shakedown campaign by a jilted woman who wanted to be Mel Tucker's girlfriend, and when he decided to cut off this relationship, she decided that she was out for blood, she wanted money, she wanted him to pay her. This is a financial shakedown. 
as so many of these allegations end up being, this isn't about truth. This isn't about justice. This isn't about sexual assault. Again, the only allegation she made, which is leading Michigan State to fire Mel Tucker, the only allegation she made is that he engaged in non-consensual phone sex with her. And again, I just point out, how do you engage in non-consensual phone sex? Does your phone have a hang-up button? Why did you stay on the call for 36 minutes? Why did you text him Happy Father's Day months after this alleged phone sex incident? What happened, according to Mel Tucker's side, which seems accurate to me, is she began to talk about their personal relationship such that it was getting out to other coaches. He decided he wanted to cut this relationship off. And as soon as he cut this relationship off, she, as the would-be side chick, the would-be girlfriend, was unhappy and decided that she was out for justice. And justice was going to come in the measure of cash. That's what happened here. That is the sum total of this interaction and this relationship. So I, I don't know what else to say about it other than I think as more of this evidence comes out, this entire idea of hashtag believe all women is fundamentally wrong. Uh, you should believe men. You should believe women. You should believe gay, straight, white, black, Asian, Hispanic people, trans people, whatever it is, not based on their identity, but based on whether their factual uh, arguments have or do not have legitimacy. And based on this uh, situation here, Mel Tucker is getting railroaded and most people in media are afraid to acknowledge it because they are concerned that if they do, they will end up being targeted themselves. That's what's going on. Uh, Pat Fitzgerald, uh, we got a lot of lawsuits going on in the Big Ten. Pat Fitzgerald has also filed his own lawsuit, and that lawsuit is now um, out there on, uh, on his firing. He's seeking $130 million for wrongful termination. He says that Northwestern unlaw- unlawfully fired him uh, for cause, that there was no justification, um, and that there were no new facts. They had initially suspended him. Nothing new happened, um, and uh, that there was an agreement that there would be no further punishment other than the two-week suspension, and that he was then terminated after this story went public and the pressure began to rain down on Northwestern. I think Northwestern is going to have to pay a massive amount of money to Pat Fitzgerald because I think their action was also unjustified. Let me be clear here. Northwestern or Michigan State could have decided to fire Mel Tucker and or Pat Fitzgerald. That's 100% within their contractual rights. But if they decide to fire their coach, they needed to pay out all of the remaining money that was owed under these contracts because there is no for-cause justification to get out of the deals. The reason why coaches make a big difference about for cause versus uh, not cause, losing a lot of football games is not cause. Usually cause is requires NCAA violations. You can look, for instance, at Jeremy Pruitt in Tennessee. Jeremy Pruitt was only owed, I think, $11 million. And Tennessee said, no, we're not going to pay you the $11 million. And I think there's still a lawsuit pending or whatever there is. Uh, over the Jeremy Pruitt situation because Tennessee said you violated NCAA rules and therefore we are going to fire you. Um, For cause, without cause, again, you don't want Mel Tucker to be your coach. Stroke him a check for the money that's owed remaining on his contract. That's why you sign a big contract if you're a coach. Same thing for Pat Fitzgerald. And I would just point out, and I'm going to keep hammering this home, why does the nation hold football coaches to higher standards of job performance than we do our political leaders. Northwestern is holding Pat Fitzgerald to a higher standard than the President of the United States would be. Same thing is true of Michigan State. Why are football coaches held to higher standards of performance than 
the president of the United States, senators, governors, whatnot. Uh, that is what I just can't get over. Your high school football coach in your town is held to a higher standard of performance than uh, there is any politician probably in your town. Just wild to think about.